So there's a reason I had to build this shiplap nook. Tucker needed a place to lay down and take Tucker naps during the day. Plus he had a lot of crap on his kettle that just needed a place to go. So we figured this would be the best spot. Dang it, I'm videotaping. For the shabby chic Pinterest explosion, this staircase looked a lot like this. It was negative space being used for nothing but collecting dust mites, Christmas decorations, and empty boxes. So I'm gonna invite you to watch this 12 minute and 37 second video on how to build this staircase nook. If you end up digging this video, click like and subscribe for more video content. I used select pine ripped down to seven inches for the risers of the stairs. Taking the width of the stairs into consideration, I cut them to the length using the miter saw. To get the screws to go up into the bottom of the tread, I used the Craig jig, which I'll link down below. This jig will make pocket holes where the screws will be able to sit in to bring the two pieces of wood together tightly. I drilled a hole slightly bigger than the screw I'd be using which will go through the wood into the tread. Once I lined up the board and the stairs, I screwed everything in tightly. There were nine total risers that I cut and screwed in all at once. Moving on to the bench that will sit under the stairs, I first drew a quick sketch that I numbered all the pieces that I'd need to cut out all at once. If you want a PDF of the plans, let me know in the comments below. All of these pieces are specific to each project, so you will need to take an accurate measurements for yourself. This bench will sit approximately 20 inches from the ground. To accommodate the shiplap and the bench, I needed to remove all the baseboard around the stairs. You can save this board and reuse it later on. To screw the pieces of plywood together, it's important to pre-drill and countersink every single hole. Taking a straight edge, I marked the two center pieces that will divide the three baskets. This is actually a lot more frustrating than it looks. Just make sure you account for the thickness of the plywood when you're taking these measurements. I'm not embarrassed to say that I messed up a few times. Now that I had all the vertical members, I flipped the piece carefully over on its back to add the bottom piece. Be careful doing this, the dividers could break away easily if you bend it weird. Because there's an outlet behind the bench, I wanted to cut a hole out that I can fish an extension cord through to string lights up the stairs during Christmas. To get the correct height that will accommodate the baseboard later, I used a few pieces of 2x4 which will sit under the bench to elevate it to 20 inches. Flipping it over and adding the backing, I just used the scraps from the plywood left over. No one will see the seam when it is painted over, so don't worry too much about this. I was able to complete this project with two 4x8 sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood. Sliding the bench in had to be the sketchiest part of the build. Don't worry if it doesn't fit, you can sand the corner down and slide it in a lot easier. Don't worry, you'll be trimming this out later. So I am not an electrician by any stretch of the imagination, so don't follow what I say here. Seek professional help if you don't have a clue what you're doing. Kinda like me. I cut a hole for the switch and worked off the outlet I was telling you all about earlier. I'm not gonna recommend gauge size, I check with your local building codes. This paddle switch will supply power to the recessed light that I'll put above. I ran the wire into the electrical housing, being sure to cut power off at the breaker. I stripped the wire on both ends, giving it enough wire to work with. Ground to ground, hot to hot, neutral to neutral is how it usually goes here. Add some caps and push the switch back into the housing. Once everything was wired, I pushed the bench back in to measure where I need to cut the access hole for the outlet. All you have to do is cut it with a jigsaw or a handsaw and round the edges. This compartment will be pretty nifty for charging your phone. Adding the studs under the stairs was pretty straightforward. I used the leftover 2x4 from earlier. 
Fishing the wire over the studs will make it easier adding these recessed lights and hooking everything up. This recessed light was super simple to wire. Everything was labeled. Simply push the wire through and you're hooked up. You can find these in the description below. Screw the bulb in, flick the switch, and you got light. To keep the light hanging, you need to bang the nails that are on the sides of the hangers. It can get pretty cramped doing this. The housing is adjustable up to 16 inches in either direction. Makes it pretty easy centering it up on the ceiling. Once the light was in, I cut some drywall and inserted it at an angle after several times cutting it to get it to fit. Use a drywall saw to cut a hole for the light. Make sure you remember where you put it. To cover up the small triangle, again I used scrap wood that I had laying around to make a quick frame. Now here's the absolute best part, the trim. It is important to get the pieces as level and plumb as possible. If you don't, it will be pretty noticeable when compared to the walls and angles in your house. Using a brad nailer makes quick work of hanging the trim. If you don't have this, a hammer and a nail punch is perfect. The baseboard from earlier will cover up the space under the bench where we use the 2x4s. I used a piece of scrap board to elevate the base because my tile was lower than my flooring. The shoe molding will hide the gap later on. To get the shiplap appearance, I bought some 8th inch Luon and ripped it down at the store to 7.5 inches width. This method is a lot cheaper than buying real shiplap. It cost me only 20 bucks. The first piece is very important to get level because all the seceding pieces will work off of this one. Once it's nailed in, I use my square as a template to leave a small gap between the shiplap. Again, if you don't have a nailer, just use a hammer. If you encounter any thermostats or outlets, simply cut the shiplap out with a jigsaw or handsaw. Cover all the nail holes with spackle using a spackle knife. This purple stuff will turn white when it's fully dried. To seal up all the trim for the paint, I use some caulk and a caulk gun. Take some warm water on your finger and wipe the excess. Plug up your sander to a vac to minimize dust flying everywhere. I really hate getting dust anywhere in the house. The most hated and beloved part of any project has to be painting. No other activity is as repetitive and monotonous as painting the thing you just built. It is, however, really rewarding. Because this is in a living room, I use an eggshell paint that doesn't have a lot of sheen, but still easy to clean off. I want to thank you for watching this unusually long video. If you're interested in learning how to make this cushion, no sewing required, click here. Before you leave, make sure you hit that like and subscribe so you can be notified every time I post a new video. Tucker and I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Fly? Where's the fly at?